Do you still consider yourself a beginner with AI and are wondering how to use this thing in the real world? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can generate high quality AI images using both free and advanced tools. So whether it's for YouTube thumbnails, blog posts, featured images, social media, even logos, I'm gonna show you some examples in this video and also include some special prompts. So be sure to stick around to the very end. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Ryan. I appreciate you being here as my goal is to help you navigate the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. And yes, it is extremely overwhelming, which is why I make these AI for beginners videos. So if you have any thoughts on this topic, be sure to let me know in the comments below. But now let's dive back in on how you can generate high quality AI images. So before I dive into some examples, I think it's first important to explain the difference between free and premium AI image models and to show you which ones I would recommend using. So first of all, if you haven't heard of the Microsoft Bing Image Creator, this is probably one of the better free AI image models around. This uses Dolly 3, which is the model that actually powers ChatGPT Plus images. So I'd recommend starting here. All you need is a free Microsoft account and you get a limited amount of credits that you can use. Uh, this is just the gallery of what community creations people have generated. I would recommend starting with the Bing image creator. I would also look at Ideogram, another great free AI image model. Imagine with Meta AI, this is Meta AI's model, as you can see some of the examples here. Leonardo AI, another great free option. And then also Picklumen. Picklumen actually is a way to generate images with Flux One. If you've never heard of Flux One, this is the AI image model that powers Grok. So all those uncensored images that you see floating around on X or Twitter, Twitter, uh, you can actually generate those using Flux One inside a free option like Picklumen. You can also use Google Gemini. They just had a huge update. Uh, Imogen 3. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of using Google Gemini for generating images. You can do a quick search on why that is. Uh, but regardless, those are some free options that you can use to start. So when it comes to premium AI image models, the big player in town still is Midjourney. You can go to midjourney.com. And by the way, guys, I'll leave links to everything that I just went through very quickly in the video description below so you can easily access them. But Midjourney arguably is still the best AI image model around. I believe it still costs $10 a month to use it on the basic plan. Uh, and then it goes up from there, standard pro and mega plan. Um, so if you are serious about generating AI images, if you're a graphic designer, um, you're gonna be using this stuff frequently, I'd recommend investing in something like Midjourney or also Adobe Firefly. Those are probably the top two image models right now. I do have a subscription to Adobe using Photoshop and Premiere. So I get Firefly as an add-on by default for free, um, but I'd recommend checking out Adobe Firefly or Midjourney if you're into the more premium AI models. Now, Adobe Firefly costs $4.99 a month if you just wanna get Firefly by itself and no other Adobe products. Um, but again, Midjourney and Adobe Adobe Firefly are probably the two best premium AI image models right now. So this first example is going to be very basic. If you've never generated an AI image before, this is where I would start by watching this video. So I'm just going to do a very simple prompt inside ChatGPT Plus, create a realistic image of a golf course with a scenic background of mountains, trees, and a waterfall. Again, I am on the Plus version. If you're not a member of ChatGPT Plus, I would simply just enter this prompt in the Microsoft Bing Image Creator since you can still get Dolly 3 for free. But here's what it came up with, right? So a pretty, pretty solid image. It's not 100% realistic. Uh, but one thing I want to show you is there's this edit button here. So if you click select, you can then edit whatever you want. So uh, for example, let's say you want to add a waterfall right here. So I can simply come down here and say, add a waterfall right here. And I'm going to click enter. And this will take a little bit. So I'm going to come back after this part is done. All right, and as you can see, it looks like it added a little waterfall right here. It's not significant, but I just wanted to show you the edit option here. And you can also download this image. There's a save icon to download it. You can just take a general screenshot of it if you want, but that is the very first example. And again, it's extremely basic. So if you already understand how to generate AI images and you've done this before, I'm gonna show you a little more advanced example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually generate a YouTube thumbnail. You can also use this for a blog post background as well. So I'm going to copy and paste this prompt. And again, I'll leave all of these prompts in the video description below. So here I say, create a visually striking background image suitable for a YouTube thumbnail featuring the white center text. So again, you can do whatever you want that's relevant to you. I'm going to do AI for beginners. Let's say I'm making a video about AI for beginners and I want that white text on my thumbnail. And right here it says that symbolizes. I'm going to do AI. 
Uh, the color here, the background should include elements suggesting a theme of, I'm gonna do AI, and then I'm going to click enter. And I'm gonna skip ahead after this output is complete. All right, so here's that image that I asked for a YouTube thumbnail. And guys, honestly, that's pretty good. You could use this as a background. So I mean, you could upload this into Photoshop, Canva, uh, do whatever you want with this. You could crop your headshot, your face over this, crop other images over this. This is very suitable for a background of a YouTube thumbnail. So again, just a little more advanced example. You can obviously edit things, whatever you want. Sometimes they spell the text wrong. So one thing you can do is edit this and then highlight right here. And if they spell the text wrong, you can just clarify in the update and then just wait a little bit for them to spell the text correctly. So that's one of the biggest flaws I would say of using Dolly 3 inside ChatGPT is it often misspells things or some little things that are wrong here and there. Uh, but that is another example of how you can generate images inside ChatGPT using Dolly or the Microsoft Bing image creator. So now let's take this to another level. So in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a prompt that reads the following. You are an expert in graphic design and AI image generation. When I provide you with a topic, I want you to provide three different prompts I can use to generate high quality images using an AI image generation model like Midjourney. And so what this is going to do is it's going to give me three advanced image prompts based on the topic that I provide. So in this topic, I'm just gonna do, uh, let's do AI for beginners again. That'll be the topic, is the topic. And then come back. And then what it's going to do is it's gonna generate three more advanced image prompts versus me just saying, generate me an image related to AI for beginners for a YouTube thumbnail. Well, now it's gonna give me more sophisticated prompts. So here it gave me three options. So now what you can do is copy and paste this prompt, come back to ChatGPT, paste the prompt right here, and then wait a little bit after the output is completed. I'm gonna skip ahead actually after I generate all three of these and show you what it comes up with. All right, so here are the images that Dolly3 inside ChatGPT came up with from those three more advanced prompts. That one's not bad. I mean, you can definitely use these for whatever you want, right? Social media posts, potentially YouTube thumbnails, blog posts, featured images, et cetera, et cetera. Here's the second one that's not bad. And then here's the third one. You guys get the idea. These outputs that I got right here are much better than the first example of just typing in something like, generate me an image about AI for beginners. And who knows what you're gonna get from that output. The the nice part is you could also take one of these three prompts that ChatGPT generated for me. So if I go back to the original thing here, what you can do is take one or all three of these prompts and come to a more advanced AI image generation model like Adobe Firefly, as you see right here, and you can enter the prompt right here. Now, this is a paid tool, as I mentioned earlier, but notice these outputs look more realistic than what I got using Dali. Now, I really like Adobe Firefly. That would be probably my recommended tool versus Midjourney, but Midjourney journey still is very high quality. But regardless, that is just a more advanced example of how you can get more sophisticated prompts using ChatGPT. Now in this next example, let's say you want to redesign your logo, whether it's for your company, your personal brand, whatever that is, you can utilize some of these tools to redesign your logo and probably make it look even better than it is right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a current image of a logo. So I'm going to upload my computer and I'm going to upload this logo. So this logo right here, here is actually a current client of mine called Tire Heroes, and I could make probably a better logo than what they're using right now. So that's what I'm gonna do here in this example. And so I have another prompt that I'm going to use. So I uploaded the logo, come back to the chat, and I'm gonna say, you are an expert in graphic design and AI image generation. When I upload my logo, I want you to provide three advanced prompts I can use to generate a higher quality logo using different AI models. Make it professional and appealing. And so here's what it's doing is it's generating three more advanced prompts based on the current logo that I uploaded that it can use as knowledge. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this first prompt. I'm gonna open up a new chat on ChatGPT, hit paste, and then I'm going to click enter. And then I'm gonna come back after I generate three different logos using these prompts. And let's see what we come up with. All right, so let's take a look at these logos generated by Dolly3. And again, this is the original logo for Tire Heroes. So this first one, look at this. I mean, this is better than the first one already. Not only that, it spelled all of the text correctly. I'm honestly shocked by that. And what you could do is download this, upload to Photoshop, Canva, remove the background, tweak some of the colors, do whatever you want. But this is an excellent starting point for a new logo. Let's look at the second option. I like this one too, very professional, very clean. 
And here's the third option. Again, that's a viable option as well. Now, you may think to yourself, well, a graphic designer could produce better logos than that. And you might be right. But the thing here, the big takeaway from all of this is that this literally took me two minutes to generate three logos based on the original logo that I uploaded versus the hundreds or thousands of dollars you spent on graphic designers going back and forth for updates taking weeks, if not months, where now you can use AI as a good starting point and then use Canva or Photoshop to make tweaks or fine tunes here and there. But again, that's just an example that I wanted to show you. You can use these tools to redesign your logo. Another tip that I want to show you that some people might not know about is you can actually go to Dolly 3's page on OpenAI's website, and then you can use some of these prompts for either inspiration or you can copy what they've already generated on their website. So that's a cool picture, right? So if you scroll down, like in this example, let's say I want to copy a picture that looks like that. Well, you can copy and paste the prompt that it's already providing, open up a new chat in ChatGPT, and then simply click paste. And there you go. Now you can now generate images similar to what OpenAI is displaying on their page for Dolly 3. So let's see what this looks like. Uh, so that's pretty cool, guys. Obviously, it's not a mimicked version. But again, just a quick tip I wanted to show you if you weren't aware of that. So last but not least, I think this is another useful example that many of you will find worthwhile. So what I did here is I uploaded this cover image of my podcast called The Marketing Quacks. And I have a very distinct brand guideline for this. I have certain shades of red. I have certain typography. And so if you work for a company or you own your own business where you have certain brand guidelines, this example is going to be very relevant for what you're trying to do with AI images. And so here I said, I need to help generate a cover image for a video series called AI Rabbit Hole. If I upload an image as a reference to my preferred color scheme, would that help? And it said, yes, it would help upload your image. So I uploaded the image with my color scheme and here's what it generated. Notice the shades of red are pretty much identical. The typography looks very similar. And again, if you actually had a brand guide, you could upload that in the prompt as well or any other directions that you want to give it. But that's very close. I mean, look at that compared to that. Now you can come back and make tweaks like I showed you in earlier examples, but that's just a really quick example that I wanted to follow up on that I thought was useful is you can upload images as references for certain brand guidelines if you have them to generate more images. So that's it, guys. Appreciate you if you've made it this far. I apologize for rambling. I hope this video wasn't too long. I just wanted to make sure that I covered a lot of details when it comes to creating AI images for beginners. So again, this is Ryan. If you found this video valuable, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment below if there's anything else that you guys want to learn when it comes to AI image generation. But most importantly, I hope you all have a great day.